Hello, my Juicy Co Creators. Lilu here in beautiful Sedona with Jake. Hello, Jake. Hello. Exciting. Here. It's great to be here. <laughs> so, we have you're the author of The Purpose Principles, and I've seen your, your TED talk, and you're inspiring. You're this inspiring young man full of wisdom and ready to, to share it out with the world. Actually, you're already sharing it. This is quite impressive. I'm impressed. Uh, thanks. <laughs> So you came from 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 uh, uh, where do you live in Los Angeles? And you're this you're this kind of you have you got this surfer look. You're from San Diego. I was born and raised in San Diego. Yeah, and and live in Los Angeles now. Yeah. And so what got you? I mean, I want to learn everything about you and your story because we've been in touch already for some time, and uh, you're inspiring. And I feel you can inspire tons of people, and you already are. Uh, so. First, you, you you dropped out of college, right? Wanna just what what was going on there? <laughs> well, I grew up traditionally thinking I I excelled in basketball as a one of the top recruits in San Diego out of high school, and I thought, you know, I'll go to school, play basketball, I'll study business, and I'll be this in shape, tall salesman for some company that I didn't care about, and I'll make a bunch of money, and everything will be awesome. And then I started to realize as my senior year in high school was ending that I actually had no idea who I was and I actually wasn't happy at all. And I found myself reading a couple books like Wayne Dyer and The, the Success Principles by Jack Canfield. And I realized like it's crazy that most of us are gambling on the biggest risk of all and that's the bet that like one day then... I'll have some freedom or then I'll have some time to do something I actually want to do. And that sparked this inquiry to like, well, what do I want to do? And for me at the time, backpacking as a 19 year old seemed like the most realistic and adventurous thing to do. And that sparked a, really a minimalist kind of journey around the world ultimately to realize this joke was on me that I, I didn't need to go get log the next stamp in my passport, that it was really about recognizing this thing within myself and really for me this sense of aliveness that I was seeking was actually coming from finding my gifts and and trying at least to share them with the world and, and living life on, on terms that felt like they were mine because it gave me this meaning when it was something that I was deciding. Yeah, what did you have to shake off then? What did I have to shake off? Well, I'd been backpacking all around the world, 19-year-old, wide-eyed kid, like just going wherever. Sometimes slept outside, went into like really a lot of impoverished areas and just looked for the locals kind of. And I was in Indonesia and I had decided after losing my wallet that I was going to be hanging out with a bunch of locals. I just had a passport and no cash. And I met these locals that took me into the concrete shacks, these concrete tilt-ups. And one day they said, like, I want to take you to my favorite waterfall. And they were so excited because I was an outsider that wanted to, I trusted them enough to go somewhere. And we headed out to this island called Lumbok and we were climbing up these huge rocks kind of like this. But imagine in tropical region pouring rain covered in moss everywhere so we're climbing up these rocks and it's so beautiful and i'm thinking like all right this is pretty crazy 10 12 foot uh boulders of moss like you got to be careful yeah. so my primary intention was i'm going to walk more careful than i ever have in my life and like just then boom i slipped and i was like that's it like i'm gonna break my neck right now and i'm falling i could hear them screaming and like impulse i covered my head up like oh my god i'm gonna break my neck or something's bad's about to happen and i got smashed in between a crevice actually like 10 12 feet and like wedged perfectly and when i opened my eyes i was like oh my gosh what's broken i was like bleeding and i was like oh my gosh what's happening and realized and kind of came to like okay nothing's broken and after i came to and rolled over and i realized like i'm stuck in this uh, one of the guys i was traveling with named ari he jumped off after me and i started crying on the ground because we're out in the middle of nowhere these 10 12 foot boulders like i didn't i didn't know if i'm watching this guy about to die jump off after me yeah. 
and he couldn't get to me and he was okay and after like 20 30 minutes i was able to get up high enough on the rocks where they were able to pull me out and that was when i realized like what am i doing like why am i traveling i realized like i was traveling with no purpose no point and i realized like how short my life was and i decided like i don't want to keep backpacking and I ended with 14 days silent meditation. And that's where I got like this idea that life was really about finding my gift and sharing it. And at the time I felt that I had a story I wanted to share. So I wrote a, I, I came back and decided to start writing and it was prompted out of realizing like I was actually running away from the problem. You know, my problem was I felt my life didn't have meaning and I thought the answer was to leave. Yeah, like uh, we want to do that. And that reminds me of what I did actually after after university. I, I left France and I went to the U.S. And, uh, and oh, you'll be better there. They won't be the parents and they won't be this, but you're still in front of yourself. You're still facing yourself, your fears, and you find yourself in similar situation even on the other side of the planet. That's what happened to me too. <laughs> yeah. So what did you have to shake off? Like, what are some of the things back then so that you can get into this place of writing? I mean, I guess it happened in this instant, but there's there are some things that you want to recommend for, for you know, to, 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 to turn life around like that or to drop or things that are not useful and not really handy. You know, we might have grown up this way, but it's not really something that you've discovered is not helpful really on a day to day to live a life full of meaning, because I know this is what you're about huh? I think the first thing is credentials. I think credentials are the are the biggest distraction ever. I think I think we stop ourselves so much because we think we're not qualified and there's really no qualifications. Like it's a piece of paper. It doesn't mean anything. And I think we can I'm too old, I'm too young. I didn't go to school as a writer uh, or whatever it may be if somebody wants to start a business or whatever it may be that we think like well I'm not qualified and like really I realized it's a lot more about will and intention than it is about like what did my transcript say because I didn't know how to write I failed junior English class in high school I taught myself how to write by retyping the great Gatsby and so the first thing I really realized was that like we're never going to be ready like, there's never a time when we're going to be ready. Like before this interview, you're like, I'm kind of nervous. Like, I don't know if there's going to be a day where like, we're just never going to be nervous or like, think like, am I good enough? Am I not good enough? And that was the, the ego is always there. I think it's like always there. Like, I don't think it's for me. I found it wasn't for me about like transcending it, but it was more about Rec giving it power or not giving it power and that le led into the second thing which was like I feel that it, it wasn't about being fearless but about being courageous like what Nelson Mandela says he says that being courageous isn't the absence of fear but taking action in spite of it whether it's like you don't know if you can get in better shape or you don't know whether you can write a book or whatever it may be those were two really big things for for me and I think the the third one, I think, is is really understanding that it's okay if people think you can't do something or you're crazy. Like, it's okay. Like, they can have their, people can have their opinions. Like, it's not, I don't think it's about proving somebody wrong. I think it's just about doing yeah. what we feel called to do. So when I recognized how pointless credentials were, it led me on this crazy journey where, you know, it eventually, the books did well and Penguin Random House picked it up and stuff like that. Yeah. Is there, is there, how do you deal with though the parents or the family or the friends or because they, they can be, they can drag us down, you know, we have those big dreams and then all of a sudden we're, we're facing uh, criticism or judgment. You spoke a little bit about judgment, but this is a big one for most people. How huh? we get stuck? I think uh, what I'm finding more and more is people don't need to know what your dream is. Yeah. And I think that I found myself getting stuck a lot and you can find yourself getting stuck a lot when, you, when we want to tell people what it is in a good hearted way. And people are beat down their whole lives. Most people fail like their whole lives. Most people um, 
don't ever actually find financial freedom you know so if you think that you have this dream that you can eventually find prosperity and peace when 75 percent of americans recently said that they don't like their jobs that's three quarters of the people that you could be talking to that their reality is that life is hard and then you die you know that's the reality and so i think like one is like not sharing them and i think two I think recognizing that at the end of the day, it's that Byron Katie quote, it's not your job uh, to like me. It's my job to like me. And Beautiful. It's important. Gosh, you're, you've got this wisdom, this connection. Where, where do you find that? Was it, was it always there for you or was it back then in that instant where everything started opening up? Because, because you, you see things pretty clearly. And I think you're showing what this your generation and the new ones coming up like feel like I feel this is there's this wisdom and a lot of kids now are being born with that like just this knowing and wanting to share you have this deep I guess longing to to share you know and connect. I appreciate it and uh, I think like no matter if you're a kid or whether you're 70 like I think actually within ourselves we all know we all know really what we want and really what we're capable of but it kind of gets covered up by repetitive failures or when the rules are defined and this and that and um i appreciate you saying that i don't know i definitely didn't grow up like thinking this way at all you know i think that um in my new book i talk about like a proficiency threshold where like when you try something long enough you eventually kind of fit everything gets clear with time like once the once we start taking steps and i think that i was somebody i recognized for me there's a difference between learning it and living it i was someone who learned it i had a microsoft word document with 45 pages of quotes from Wayne Dyer and Eckhart Tolle and like I was like well this quote Wayne Dyer says this and this but when I looked at my life I wasn't living an inspired life I wasn't living it I just knew these things and so I think when I recognized for myself like living it was for me taking an action even when I didn't know if I was qualified even it even though they said you can't try that you can't try that because at the end of the day we're all we're gonna die like <laughs> that's just like what happens yeah. And so I think when we realized that, when I realized that, that when I was living it, then I was able to see what's actually true for myself. It's like confidence isn't, I don't know if it's acquired in a moment. I don't know if wisdom or whatever is acquired in a moment. I think it may be something that builds over time when we start to step outside of what we think. Let's talk about confidence because you have a chapter on in your book, uh, the the purpose principles. You have a, a chapter on on confidence. What what is what is your recommendation to somebody that doesn't has that? Can you build it? Do you have some tips? I think try. I think trying things. I think that usually we never try things, and even when we're. Uh, even if we're 70 or whether we're 12, we usually never try things. And so I think it's hard to be confident when you don't try things because you never know what you're capable of. So stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah, even if it's just running on the treadmill for an hour at three levels faster than you've ever run before. Like sometimes it's not at all about quitting or starting a business, I don't think. Like it's just ways that we can push ourselves into uncomfortable spaces to see that our mental, emotional, and physical capacity is act in spiritual capacity is beyond what we thought so i think confidence is something that can be acquired through through time you know through recognizing these things i think confidence can also be found when we recognize the positive influence we can have on others you know like when you're walking down this when i'm walking down the street i find that if i'm sluggish and if i can if i make someone smile i realize like wow i actually have this like powerful light within myself and i think you're gorgeous too come on (laughs) that helps i think the little things that we can overlook like ways that we can influence someone in a positive way just by making someone smile when the cashier is like i'm having an okay day and then by the time you're done with them they end up like smiling i think confidence in those little things um all of those types of things can build up like i don't think that confidence is something that you're born with i think that like will smith says there's a distinction between talent and skill talent is something you have naturally but skill is developed by beating on your craft by trying new things by exploring yourself 
It seems like uh, a lot of us, for a lot of us now, it's time to step into action and, you know, really live those principles because we've read it, we've seen it, uh, we've seen hundreds of interviews, we've we've heard those gurus or those teachers speak about it, and now it's it's really taking the courage to take this 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 journey because it's not a, it's not a smooth one. I mean, it takes huge courage, right? Yeah, I believe that for sure. I really believe that, like the mark of who we are i think is really determined in the in the action we take you know not in the not in the books that we read or the interviews we watch you're inspired by um jim carrey i i am yeah i'm inspired by jim carrey for sure uh i think that next on lilu masay tv <laughs> yeah next jim <laughs> jimmy what are you here come on yeah no i i'm a, i the new book i th i think that um The media does a great job of sharing success stories, only the success. So we don't know that Brad Pitt is Brad Pitt because he was groomed for a traditional path after just about to graduate from Missouri University in journalism and get a job at his local news. And he was like, this isn't fulfilling. This has no meaning to me. And he had a couple hundred dollars and he drove out to Los Angeles, didn't know anyone. By the time he was there, he was so broke that he put on the El Pollo Loco mascot, which is a giant chicken mascot for anyone who doesn't know. And covered up. Covered up. And that's how he funded his acting. You know, so I, Jim Carrey is another one I share. I think that these stories are awesome when we can uncover how people fail because we can see ourselves in them. Like that Oprah actually failed a lot. This person failed a lot. Whomever it is, if somebody looks up to them, we can find that, that they actually, it was it, where they are was acquired. Yeah. And we, I think that is inspirational, at least to me. Yeah. 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 Because there's all those people magazine and all those beautiful homes and cars and this, and it's all based on that success there, that moment when this has nothing to do with happiness. This has nothing to do with what actually the person went through. Yeah, what if there's like a Oops magazine and it was all the stories of everything bad that happened to people. Then it <laughs> might... In a good way, in a good yeah. way. <laughs> in a good way where people could see like, oh, wow, that person was there and now they're there. Um, I think that there would be less of... People wouldn't look at their favorite musician or actor or writer or humanitarian and think like, well, I'm just me. They might look at them instead and think, well, that, that can be me i can do that yeah, yeah. instead of the pedestal thing yeah 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 because otherwise it's there it's not for me it's for them yeah. but then we feel separation yeah. there's a lot of separation in this world do you feel it and and do you think these are some of the principles that can help to just help us to be more human huh? it feels like this is what you're you want us to embrace who we are yeah i think that it's it's hard for us to find peace and happiness if if we're not embracing who we are and and embracing our own desires you know we're in a world ralph aldo emerson says the greatest success is to be yourself in a world that's constantly trying to make you something else mm -hmm. and so i think that we can't find that success really unless we embrace what our desires may be no matter how different they may be from what I'm the only one in my family who hasn't graduated college out of like 20 cousins and that like at first I thought like am I dumb like what what's wrong with me and then I realized like no I'm just like this is where I'm going it's just it's not better or worse it's just where I want to go this is who I am yeah this is who I am yeah and you're saying we find that inside tell us more about that I think we find it inside by listening to ourselves and asking ourselves the right questions. You know, it's, it's easy to never want to look inside yourself when the only questions that we are used to asking are, why do I always fail? Why does this always happen to me? And the voice says back, because you're stupid, because you're fat, because you're too skinny, because you're not smart. And I think when we ask ourselves like other questions, like, what do I desire? What does interest me? Like, what would make my year the most successful year ever? Then these other things speak in our head and they say, try this, do that, explore this. And so I think it's found within ourselves. And at the end of the day, uh, we're, we, we know that exterior things don't 
actually fulfill us like the next car the next house that doesn't actually fulfill us there's a lot of studies that show that somebody who makes 50 million dollars a year is no more happier than someone who makes 50,000. There is a distinct difference between somebody who makes 5,000 and 50,000 because it can get us out of poverty, can put our basic needs um, and these things that we need and, and we need to be provided for. But after that, I think a lot of the fulfillment and, and peace that we can find is is through within ourselves, through exploring ourselves and, and hearing these things that say do this and doing it. What makes Jake happy, really, really happy? I like creating things. I like creating things. Uh, I've gotten into music recently and I really like it because I don't have a publishing contract for it because there's no expectations. I can create whatever I want. I like doing that. And I really like to, I like to look at a blank piece of paper and everything in my head says like, gosh, you're never going to be able to write a book this time. Like that, <laughs> that momentum's gone. And then I, I like exploring nothing and seeing what's actually within it. Yeah. So tell us more about that process. because I think it's really, it's a really interesting creative process. How do you deal with that? So how, how do you go about it? Okay. This is not happening. Now you're, you're not giving up obviously. Yeah. My girlfriend and I listened to a documentary on Charles Bukowski, who's like super famous novelist at Stead now. And he has this poem in it. And he says like, um, he says, if you need to wait for the inspiration, if you need to wait, then wait. But if it's not coming, do something else. So like, I try and be as patient as possible. Yeah. We're like, I'll think that I'll have something done on a Friday and I'll have it done in two weeks actually, but all of it will come out maybe eventually in two days. So I think like being patient with ourselves and like trusting is a really important thing. But I think also oftentimes we don't find what it is we're looking for. Like even with running, people say you get into the runner's groove at like 0.75 miles, almost at three quarters miles. That's when you get in the groove before it's drudgery. A lot of times that's so for different creative processes as well. So I think sticking with something long enough to where we can, our body can actually relax into sitting for a long, longer period of time than we're used to, you know, turning off the phone and stuff like that is always great. But my process is like, um, I look above the screen when I write, I don't really, because we can never get anything done because we're like, gosh, that actually stinks. You know, we erase the next line and the next line. I look above the screen. So then I don't judge myself too much. So I think trusting that like you are smart, you know, like you are, you're not, maybe you may not have the IQ everyone else has, but what's IQ? It's just like somebody said, like, this is what makes you smart. Like, that's not true. Like uh, mother Teresa didn't have a, ed ha have an education and she influenced the lives of hundred million people around the world. Malcolm X didn't have an education. Like a lot of uh, Richard Branson was dyslexic and he didn't graduate middle school. And he has like one of the biggest companies in the world with Virgin. And so I think like recognize like I think it's important for us to recognize like we are smart in our own way and like you may suck at music and it may not maybe you should drop music and try running or 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 humanitarian work like everything isn't for everyone but I really believe that we are all have a, gen a genius capacity within ourselves you know and people just we're just taught that that's not true. What is your relationship with life, the divine source? I mean, do you do you connect to that, and do you feel that that's that's part of the being patient type of part of the process? Well, I that think it flows, <laughs> it comes in. Yeah. I think there's two people. There's Jake, and then there's the divine. You know, Jake says, "God, why am I writing? Why is this not coming? Why is this not coming?" And then when I can ignore Jake. I realize that it's actually there already. I believe that like we're not separate from the divine, from the, the universe, from ultimate creativity, from um, God, from love, that it's not something outside of ourselves we need to necessarily acquire through 14 day silent meditation. I think it's slowly starting to talk to ourselves in new ways and recognize that we don't need anything in order to like really recognize power within us. 
So we can be unconditional towards ourselves. Huh? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that that's uh, definitely true. You know, like what Wayne Dyer's, I think uh, I really connected as a sophomore in college with, you know, he was bringing forth a lot of uh, old I, I am teachings. And I think that, you know, there's only there's only one of us here. And we know that ultimate one thing has to be the divine God, love, whatever people like to call it. So the subtitle of your book is uh, how to draw more meaning into your life. Yeah. Can you summarize what what you what what is what is meaning? <laughs> I think meaning is this like I I've, I mentioned this a couple times um 75% of Americans said they're dissing they don't like their jobs like they're unhappy. And so I don't think that that's meaning. I think that meaning is like this energy. It's this livelihood, like something to wake up to. And I think that I called it draw, excuse me, how to draw more meaning. Because I think it's an art of looking past our routines, you know, and looking at like the soup, looking at the supermarket in a different way. You know, is there someone like making eye contact in the supermarket sometimes is like the most fulfilling part of my day. <laughs> like if I'm having a bad day, like I know I can find happiness just by connecting, stopping for a second and connecting with someone. So I think meaning is like, ultimately I believe it's like living life on, on our terms. And that may not b mean quitting everything and doing everything in a different way it just may be showing up in the best way for our children or for the people in our community and so I think meaning is really looking at what are ways that we can challenge ourselves and improve you know and so I think goals are an important part of that because we don't need to change our I know I, I I always hope that my message isn't like people are like well everyone can't drop out and go travel and like that's I don't I think the joke was on me. Like I went around to see the, and now I'm back here in America again, you know? And, uh, so I think recognizing goals are an important way to draw meaning, you know, um, a goal goals limiting uh, what we can do actually is in there a bigger plan for us. I think goals, if we look at goals by what we get, they are, but, uh, a, I believe the purpose of a goal isn't what you get, but who you become. And at the end of the day, who you become is that you can lose everything everything you the stock market could crash and you could literally you could be so poor you don't even have a house anymore but if you've learned all these things then you can get whatever it is you want back but at the end of the day you always have who you can become that's a henry david thoreau quote uh the point of a goal isn't what you get but who you become and when we're not getting what we want it's not what do i need to do it's who do i need to become i think is important yeah So who I need to become, like, uh, to be this generous, loving being. Yeah. And and then just try it out. Do you try that on as a suit? I think it's nice to try that on as a suit. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, So I was 19, and I'm like, I got finally got past all this doubt and scariness and wrote this book called Into the Wind. No one would take it. Literally no one. I couldn't. Everyone's like, you're 19. Like, what, you don't even know a website, you know? <laughs> Sell books and come back. And then I got denied by my favorite publishing company and I had to tear off. I made, I put like 500 affirmations. I am published by blah, blah, blah on my, around my room. Like, laminated above my toilet, like everything. And they denied me. And I had to tear them all down off my wall. And I was like, my dream was focused on this thing yeah. and and I had to re and then I had to self publish a book and I printed them out of my car I went door to door to people's houses door slammed in faces you're crazy you're this you're that I went to strangers on the street I go to a cafe and one day there would be no one there like nice no one showed up today you know <laughs> and uh and I had to Eventually, I kept building. I kept showing up every day, and we sold of a self-published book, thirteen thousand five hundred copies, and it made it a top three hundred on Amazon and top five in all of its categories. And then I gave a TEDx talk, and then Penguin picked up my new book, and I met Jack Canfield, and and I look back now, like I had, if I would have just gotten what I wanted from my goal, I would have never become this type of person that actually is what fulfilled me. I had to learn these skills. I had to learn the patience. And so that's why I think goals are important. Uh, oftentimes we think 
I used to think from personally goals weren't important because it's what you get. But then I realized like who you become is of the greatest value. You know, it's like that Einstein quote, don't strive to be a person of success, but person of value. So I really believe that like I found fulfillment out of this terrible at the time tragedy for me that all these adults were were denying me and didn't think I was good enough. But I found that in my own way, I was good enough for my own peace and for my own dream. You know, my dream was asking me to become something more. So how did you see this moment of supposed failure? Like, how do you deal with that? What is your recommendation in that moment when you receive such a news, like devastating news, like, oh my God, the the publisher company that I wish is not going to take me. Does this mean it's not for me? Or how do you deal with that? Uh, not like me. I think I told. I think I. I think I was like, they will pay for this. Yeah. I was so mad. And then when I came to, I I think it really is the question. Like when it's okay. I think I think it's totally natural to feel anger, upset, frustration. But there's a thing between feeling it and letting it control us long term. And I think the way to step out of that of that emotion controlling us is by asking asking ourselves, ask yourself, because this happened, who do I need to become? If this dream, this goal, that um, this perfect relationship, this dream family, whatever it is, if I want that, who do I need to become? And and that's the that's the law of attraction. When you become at a higher resonance. Um, or at a resonance that's more true to yourself, you're going to attract that partner. You're going to attract the agent, the company that best fits. And then it attracted Penguin Random House, which was a better fit for me at the time. And it was because I became something more, you know? And so I think that that question is super important. And then recognizing at the end of the day that failure is nothing more than like the clouds, like the storm for the day. Like what failure is, what is failure? It's just like this thing that we made up that like you're a failure. Well, like, is everyone a failure then? Because everyone dies. Like, did we fail? Cause we're dead now. Like, yeah. so I think those are like important things that I try and ask myself, you know, I, I, I have a chapter in failure on the book because most people fail fail like everyone did jack canfield was denied by 265 publishing companies before chicken soup for the soul and jack he says uh when someone says and no so was jk rowling and so was jk rowling yeah. yeah and jack says uh when you, someone says no you say next i think that's a great thing or he says also sw 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 some will say no some will say yes so what someone's waiting Uh, so SW, 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 SW. There are little tricks, of course, you know, that can keep us back up. But I think uh, really, I think we just it's important to recognize that like fulfillment comes from who we become. So if we don't get something, we can still that doesn't affect who we can become. Yeah, And that's that's where purpose is. I think so. I think that's where we find per we find I found purpose and meaning I don't know if I felt it before when I wrote the book. I think I feel a lot more. I feel so much appreciation for where I am now because I went through that because I realized that this actually I'm in my own space in a rare waters, you know, that I was never, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been able to appreciate had it just been like, okay, great. We're going to go sell a million copies for you, Jake. Here you go. Like, I would never appreciate anything, you know, and I guess that's why they always say like getting your hands dirty is important. I think when we live life to our own design and we get our hands dirty and we fail, we can realize like actually how beautiful of a place that we're in and how amazing it is that we're literally on this rock spinning through space. We really don't understand why we're here. Like that's crazy. Like there's this deep sense of like meaning that we're here you know, and, and to share our light and to share our love and to lend an ear and share a smile and to just become more powerful and more loving and more caring. Yeah. It feels like when we're on purpose, things just flow on. Huh? It's nice and easy. Like I saw how here to set up the interview and everything. Yeah. It's like it nearly feels like there's destiny or it's already written sometimes. Do you have this sense? Do you believe in destiny? Oh, yeah, I, def I definitely believe in destiny. Uh, For sure. I think that, uh, I think that it's, it's totally true too. Like, I think when we start picking things up and we start get going, things start falling into place. I notice I 
the amount that I work now compared to the amount that I worked two years ago, I hardly ever work besides when I write and I give speeches. Like I don't do any administrative work anymore and, but I am getting a lot greater results. So I definitely believe in destiny, but I think at the same time, um, that can limit us at the same time. Like sometimes we can think, well, I'm going to wait for destiny, you know? And I think that sometimes waiting is great, but I think that we shouldn't wait on the supernatural in order to show itself. Maybe it's, it's can also sometimes be about us taking action to find the supernatural within ourselves, you know, this power within ourselves. So I think destiny can limit us, you know, um, I think we're all destined for greatness and success and happiness. And like, maybe that's our ultimate destiny is that we're supposed to have this deep sense of happiness. And then it's up to us to find out what those things are that give us those feelings. How do you know that for sure that we're all destined to great things? How do I know that for sure? Because we're alive for starters, like this is great things. You know, there's this quote that we were listening to. um, Jack London uh, novelist said, your greatest success is that you can walk outside and you can look at the stars and see how beautiful it is. This is success. Like this is success. Like the sun is on us. It feels good. Like we're looking at each other in the eye. Like this is success. Like is success to have a really big house? Like, I don't know. I think a lot of the people that are, that have those things are, a lot of them are in psychiatric care. They, you know, they are like, no offense. Like there are a lot of them that are deeply fulfilled, but you know, I think chasing objects can't, it can't be success. You know, I I think all we need to do is wake up in the morning. If you woke up in the morning, you, there's something greater than yourself bless you with this incredible success to have another day to connect with people and to find out more about yourself and to have surprises and to, um, pay for something at the store. And you're thinking in your head, like, Oh my gosh, I'm running out of money. Like that's a successful opportunity in order to, to experience different spectrums of emotions between like fear and, and then the opportunity two weeks later when you get a good break and you're like, Oh, actually like I can buy coffee and not worry about it. Like I think it depends what your definition of success is. You know, some people's definition of success is $10 million. So they feel like a failure their whole life because they have $6 million in their bank account and they're never happy, you know? And so I think it's important the ways we define things are important. Yeah. So then we can, we can then meet that goal or meet that destiny or meet that purpose so we can live that. So we, we set ourselves to win. Yeah. And be fulfilled. Yeah, I think goals, like, that's why I don't, I don't think at a goal, like, when I achieve this, then I'll be successful. I think a goal is a way for me to become a bigger and better person more than I ever knew possible. But I think we're success, like, if we're waking up in the day, especially if we're being a positive influence. But I think the fact that you woke up, you're blessed with success. What you do with that success, if you create more of it, um, is up to you. Or if you become really fearful and you hoard your money and you lock yourself in your room and you don't interact with people, you're cho- everyone c- creates success and it cho- um, reacts with success in a different way. Some people, when they get rich, they turn into they they become more of what they are. They give more and more and more and more. Some people they were successful, then they get a bunch of money, and they're more and more fearful and more and more greedy. I think that you know maybe we're like reacting to success that's happening to us at all times, and that's determining our character. You know maybe our character is actually like the only steady success that we can have, and ways to develop that is by just being a positive influence. Beautiful. Uh, last little word of wisdom for us, because you, boy, you did you pour beautiful things out today. Is there a last thing that you want to leave us with? Because there's so much in this book, and I really highly recommend it. But is there anything else? Uh, I like this quote uh, that I lived live. I really like this quote by Jack Canfield. He says, "Write it down, make it happen." I asked Jack. I said, uh, "Jack, Jack, what's like the?" the thing everyone needs to know in order to like reach all their dreams and be super successful. And Jack just looks at me. He's like, write it down, make it happen. And I was like, 
like mad like say tell me something more and he's like well you already have within you the keys to all the success of anything you want or else you wouldn't have the desire in the first place like why would you have the desire in the first place and so write it down make it happen uh writing down goals has a power that thinking goals in your head doesn't and you know i think that uh, remembering that it's not about what we get in the process of a goal but i think direction is really important i think most of us don't have goals so writing it down and making it happen is a great way to uncover who we are when we think well i don't know who i am well go out and do something then you can then we can find out who we are you have great exercises in there too. Oh, thanks. Yes. I saw. I said to my girlfriend, I said, if someone forgot every single word of the entire book, but they did the exercises, I'd be stoked. <laughs> beautiful. Well, great job. I'm so excited. We got to put this on camera and share it with the whole wild world. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. You're juicy. Oh my God. My delicious co-creators sending you so much love. Hope you like this video. Please like it and share it wildly on social resorts. Oh, uh, social resorts. Social resort, social media. Yes, thank you, Jake. Thank you for having me. Big kisses. We send you much love from beautiful Sedona.